Time for another stock review. Uh, I do this service for my members and this accompanies Meet the CEO series where I interview all the CEOs from Wall Street and uh, you will get to hear them in their mind of what they, uh, what's behind the business. And I always like to meet the CEOs and talk to them, understand the business. Uh, I buy businesses, not share prices, and I like to uh, build relationships with those CEOs. Anyway, right now we're going to cover Grab. This is a full review for one of my members. If you are a member, I will do this free for you, uh, a service using the most advanced algorithmic software. Over the next uh, p- the period of time making this video, you're going to see some of the most advanced algorithmic software shared in the most clear way and I can give you access to this service. My members can get a free plan of this or a premium plan, which basically makes my membership for free because I give the best deal way better than Bloomberg, CNBC. They don't even get discounts on this service. It's a review uh, done by myself using this software, which is unbiased. It's all AI algorithmic software, which presents real honest information, not um, sponsored by old school Bloomberg and CNBC and all these mad money nonsense where they are you know, sponsored to promote stuff and blah, blah, blah. This is the real deal. And um, it provides me with the information when I invest uh, what I'm going to buy, what's undervalued. I'm going to share with you the balance sheet, the profit loss. I'm going to share with you the a solvency score, uh, who's buying on the inside, who's selling on the inside. I'm going to give you a solvency score. We're also going to look at the, the website. We're going to bring up the latest news from the company. We're also going to look at a back test and see how it compares to the S&P. So if you're going to buy it, then you are informed right off the bat uh, that, that this is a good investment. Again, this is not for uh, gamblers and guessers. This is for investors. I uh, like to buy companies, own them, and buy them under value. So if it's your first time here, click subscribe and ring the bell. Welcome to you and give us a thumbs up. Uh, this uh, helps promote the video and share it out when it comes out. I'm making this during a live video. So you might get some comments from people during the show. They might do a super chat. Uh, the, the member who's asked me to do this video might uh, pop up on the screen and say something that can happen or subscribers or super chats or whatever. Anyway, let's get straight into it. Now we start nice and simple. Investing is simple doesn't have to be cluttered like a lot of brokerages or, 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 or institutions will make it seem. It's quite simple, really. You read a balance sheet, you get to meet the CEO, which is what I do. I make friends on my X account and my Instagram, and uh, then I learn about the business. You don't need all the very complicated charting stuff. We're not guessing. We're not hope. We're not, you know, we're not using a chart to predict the future. We're not, we're not gamblers. We're just looking at a sound business with a good balance sheet. Very, very easy, really. Okay. So let's uh, have a look. First of all, what is Grab Holdings? All right, let's have a look. Start off simple and we'll move in deeper as we go down. As we can see from a basic line chart, it IPO'd here uh, back in uh, 2020. Uh, now, at this period of time, everything popped up, particularly uh, this type of business, because people were at home. They were on Robin Hood. Robin Hood exploded. We had the GameStop nonsense. Ridiculous. Um, we had everybody with stimulus checks buying everything. And a lot of this, a uh, lot of businesses pumped that had no place to pump. So I don't like straight off the bat any business that pumped during COVID because it was a macro external, very rare, unique condition and it may not be repeated. And even if it is repeated, I don't invest in those sort of events because they are unpredictable and they're just random and they're not a good way to invest. So we saw that here. This business popped Went all the way up to 16 bucks, fell down, had another, another, another resurgence in 2021, fell away, and now it's been going flat for most of the time. But what is Grab? Well, Grab Holdings uh, enables millions of people each day to access its driver and merchant partners to order food or groceries, send packages, hail a ride or taxi, uh, pay for online purchases or access services such as lending, insurance, wealth management, and telemedicine. Now, straight off the bat, I'm looking at that thinking, seems to be uh, all over the place. It's not just, I thought it was a food company. Then I found out it was a insurance company, wealth management company. Seems a bit confusing, seems to be all over the place. That's a no from me straight away. Um, remember, there are many, many choices about what to buy and what to invest in. 
um, uh, everything's got to pass my test um, before I even consider investing in it. So straight off the bat, I don't like a company that's a little bit of um, confusing direction of what it actually is. Um, it seems to be, I thought it was a, like a, a food delivery business and does many other things. Anyway, uh, anyway, CEO, Ping Yo Tan. Um, okay, from Singapore. Um, and now I will tell you straight off the bat, um, I've been to Singapore. It's a very nice place. I don't buy any uh, Chinese manipulated kind of style of stock at all. I'm not interested in that at all. Never will, never have done, never, I'm not going to do that. Um, of course, Singapore isn't China, but uh, it's in the Middle East. Singapore, it may have some influence there, Southeast Asia. It's not uh, the sort of thing that I like to buy. It's very heavily manipulated. Um, and we can see some manipulation here with the way that stock uh, went down, went up and straight back down again. That does suggest some manipulation there, but may not be. Just drawing a, a general conclusion there. But so far, um, two things I've looked at, I don't like, but I'm not trying to be biased in any way. I'm just being honest and that's it. Uh, again, we're not joining a fan club. There are other things to buy. Um, it's relatively risky. It's If you use margin to buy this company, it's 50% margin. Lowest is 25, highest is 100. So it's somewhere in the middle. Um, the brokerage, this in this case, Robin Hood, think it's quite risky. Um, more likely to get a margin call if you were all in on the stock. But anyway, that doesn't mean you're going to have a margin call. And that's an, another video anyway. Uh, average volume, 23 million. Uh, today's volume is 7.7. .7. It's it, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, central time. So we're on, we're on about the average volume today. Um, reasonable volume, not, not, not massive, not small. It's not much really. Remember, volume provides you the opportunity to... Um, the opportunity does present you with um, vol volume prevents you the opportunity to get in and out of the stock uh, at the price you want. Um, a low volume stock can mean you can get stuck in a stock um, and it can trade sideways for a while and then suddenly drop and then you can't get out. Remember, stock trail losses don't always guarantee a sale. Uh, even if you use that, they only, they only work in the in trading hours anyway. Um, and you, there are brokerages that offer insurance for that. Anyway, price earnings ratio obviously loses money. It's negative $14. Um, not necessarily a bad thing if it's a new company. I mean, how long how long has it been around for? I think I missed that. 2012. No, it's been around a while now, so we shouldn't be losing money. Uh, again, I expect excellence from my companies that I own um, and, and my CEOs because they work for me. I own the company, right? That's the way I look at my investments. Um, years on now, it did well during COVID. Was it a COVID play? A lot of businesses are simply COVID plays. I don't know if that's the way that this will ever make any money. It did. It, it may did. It may have done during COVID. Anyway, um, twelve billion market cap. It's uh, again. That's only the value of the shares outstanding, not the value of the company. We'll come on to the value in in a minute. Now. Uh, Morningstar is one of those uh, analysts. Um, they do all right, but again, there's a lot of manipulation here. Analysts are, you know, have their own agendas. I don't like it, but I will read it out and then we'll get more uh, in. We'll, we'll look at my analysis in a minute. They're saying it's a strong buy. Well, what, what, are, what are they saying about it? The bulls are saying the, the, the mobility business has no major competitors which could facilitate continued robust GMV growth. Okay. The bears say possibility of bigger conglomerate with massive war chest as market entrant if capital allocation is not an issue to new competitor. Exactly. A business like this can be crushed by somebody else coming in, like Amazon, for example, if they wanted to be in this space or whoever. Um, anyway, let's uh, has have a look. Stewardship is standard. Uncertainty, very high. That doesn't worry me. That's just a headline. Don't be put off by that. Economic moat, none. Some good businesses have an economic moat of none. That's the margins. We'll talk about the margins in a minute, where we get the economic moat from. Fair value. Fair value. $4.40 is the value uh, that they are saying for a fair value. Uh, again, I will, we, will, we will establish the real value in a minute, not what Morningstar say for whatever reason, but what the actual value is. And it may be very different than what they have just said. Anyway, Let's have a look now. Since we, since 22, because obviously we saw it crash down in after it IPO'd, uh, an initial pop, 
it has been slowly uh, improving. Now, the bright orange is what it actually achieved on earnings, and we cover all the earnings. So if I do buy this stock, I will cover the earnings, and I will hear what they have to say, and I will make friends with the CEO. I, uh, if you're watching me right now, you are invited to join me after this review I'm doing on your business. Call me, be on the show, and let's discuss your business. Uh, all CEOs on the New York Stock Exchange uh, are invited to join my show. Um the valuation uh, is uh, the 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 earnings has been improving um, and uh, it's it's uh, beaten expectations sometimes missed expectations sometimes. Remember, the expectations is set by Wall Street, um, not the company itself. A very different thing. However, they do seem to be improving and potentially moving towards perhaps being cash positive and actually returning a profit. We see zero getting closer here. All right, who are we in bed with? In other words, what other companies, not other invest, what other what vest, what are other investors? Uh, buying who own this stock. That gives us an indication of the, the volatility of the stock, how the stock will trade. What we don't want to see is is really scammy, rubbish stocks in here. We don't want to see Mullen. I always use Mullen as an example because it is proven to be a total joke. I don't know how it gets away with it. We don't want to see Vestas with Mullen in here because it means you'll get false news, false information, same as Lucid. Uh, we don't want to see that. We don't want to see pump and dump. We want to be in a company that's growing. And has a good, uh, you know, a good base of investors. So what have we got here? SoFi. SoFi is uh, potentially a good business. Uh, it's doing well now, but it's got the CEO rubbish. Um, the CEO running a money, a business fintech company, and he has no idea about about um, uh, the 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 Fed rates. Um, made many occasion to say the Fed rates were being cut when everybody knew they were going up. But he did it to try and promote his own company. Straight away, that's it, done, dead. Boom. Not buying SoFi until they change the CEO. Um, SoFi is a good business. However, the CEO talks nonsense. So uh, no time for that at all. SoFi is a uh, volatile stock. Robin Hood, it does draw. I am in Robin Hood. I think Robin is a 4X. It does draw a very negative audience, however, because of GameStop. Though all the gamblers got that lost all their money. But uh, a good business, but the wrong type of investor. Most of those investors have gone now. They got shorted out. The stock's going up now. It's whatever, but it just shows you where it came from. Palantir, great business. Very, very volatile, very overbought. Uh, charge point, um, open door, lucid. There's lucid, let's see. So this stock will have, and it has, and I proved it already, has volatility because of these people that are in it. It's very important to understand that, all right? Very important to understand that. Anyway, Let's go and look at the website. Now, how does the company present itself to its, it, to its uh, customers and its investors? It's important, right? It's important. You're the investor. You own the business. How's it being portrayed to the world? Grab making every day better. It's got an app. Download the app. From essential services to earning opportunities, we are an all-in-one platform. Hmm. I buy businesses that are unique, proprietary, well-funded, good, strong balance sheets, the right investor, uh, unique, only one Tesla, only one Apple, only one Virgin Galactic, only one Amazon, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm confused what this company actually is. So as an investor, I don't know what I'm buying so far. Um, consumer. Let's have a look. Food. Have all your cravings deliver it, delivered to your doorstep. Find everything you need, groceries and more. Express, send packages, documents and beyond. Ride, choose from, a variety of, choose from a variety of vehicles to take you from A to B. So is it Uber? We know Uber Eats, you know, we know that does that. So pay, secure and seamlessly cash payments online and in store. Insurance, get everyday protection with accessible insurance. Invest on your terms and watch your money. I tell you what, straight off the bat, this is not for me. You can't have, you, I, I, I don't know what this is. We're all over the place and I'd love to talk to the CEO. Maybe they would have a, uh, they could tell me, no, no, we are very focused. What are you focused on? What do you do? You seem to be a delivery company, an insurance company. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. Amazon 
Amazon is, uh, you know, Amazon does TV, it sells stuff, it's got shops, it's got all kinds of uh, other businesses. I get it, but um, are you that at uh, a 12 billion market cap? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, that's just my initial look. Um, the driver, so the, 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 the drive with us, be the boss of your own working hours, deliver with us. Okay. Uh, the merchant. Become a grab merchant, partner, increase your reach. Now, there is an advantage, of course. Amazon are, are in everything. Apple are in a lot of things as well, not just selling iPhones. There is a benefit to this because you could um, use your capital to infiltrate all the different sectors and, you you, you know, you could dominate. There is, a, there is a, there's a, call, there's a reason for that, but it's just not my style of investing. If I don't really understand what you actually are in your kind of everything, it does look a bit confusing to me. Anyway, they've got some news. Let's read the news and then we'll look at what's important, the numbers, and then we'll do a back test review and so on and so forth. Um, let's have a look at this latest, latest press release they just put out. This was uh, two weeks ago, so a month ago. So it's relatively, relatively new. Um, Grab today announced updates to its directors and officers. Ong Ching Yin, chief people officer, uh, Chief People Officer, I've never heard of that uh, t title before, at Grab, will be appointed to its board of directors with effect from January. Uh, Grab is also announcing that it will be expanding its board of directors to seven members with an immediate director to, to be identified. Okay. Um, Chi Yin will assume co-founder. I really want to know more about the business. No, not who's taking over because I don't know any of these people at the moment. So I don't know. Uh, Grab will be expanding, Grab's board of directors, role of president. I don't know if any of that's really important right now. If you don't know the people, it doesn't mean a great deal, does it? Um, so that press release is not important to me. Okay, so I'm not going to I'm not gonna waste your time looking at that just yet, all right? But what I do want to do is go now over to the, um, the financials of the business. No point knowing about all these appointments unless you know who the people are. And on this video, we haven't got the time to establish who these people are. Right, now then. This business has been around for a while, but we have no intrinsic value. Why is that? Now, let me explain. Unlike Morningstar, who give you a valuation, who tell you what the value is, they are employed to give a valuation. I am not employed or sponsored to give evaluation. I am just using numbers. I am not going to guess. I am not going to have hopefully built in. Not at all. So we are unable to give an accurate intrinsic valuation because metrics are missing. So we're not going to guess. They're not available. For all kinds of reasons, uh, where the business is, how much money it's making, it's not got enough profit yet, it's not the yada yada. There's a whole load of figures that come together to give us a valuation, not just guessing and uh, making a best valuation. That's not of interest to me. There are many businesses I can buy with an intrinsic value, and I know what I'm buying. I don't know what this business is. This is proved out by this intrinsic value. There is none. However, people are very happy to give you a review and if you give them a million dollars, they'll say anything you want. Well, that's no good to my members. That's selling stories, newspapers, headlines. That's no good to me at all. And it clearly states there is not enough data to reliably calculate the value of Grab. So we're not going to guess. So I'm definitely not buying this company. Don't care what they say. Um... Lots of exceptional growth forecasts, lots of guessing, but that's not investing. We will use this. This is our algorithmic software, which picks up the, the headlines from the last earnings. This was done, uh, when was this done? This is, a, this is a Q3 of 23 recently. So we can see what was said during the earnings call. I know I cover them all live. But this is what we bring all together here. F for the first time, the, the company announced a positive group adjusted EBITDA driven by significant, revi uh, significant revenue growth uh, of 61% year on year and raised its full year revenue guidance to 2.3 um, 2.3 um, 
one to 2.33 billion, surpassing the upper end of the prior 2.2 to 2.3 billion estimate. Good, good news. The improvement financial performance reflecting strategic focus on cost efficiencies. That's the moat, that's the margin. We'll talk about that in a second. An operational optimization across various segments marked in pivotal milestone in its pursuit of sustainability, profitability, and long term value creation. Okay, some good words there from the last earnings. That was the, you know, the company presenting itself. They have to be honest, they can't, but they, they can, they can, you know, they can dress it up to be better than it is. Numbers don't lie, but, you know, whatever. That's the statement they made. Anyway, the financials of the company. We've got limited information here, limited information, but it's 2.2 billion. It's up 12%. And we can see here uh, 1.4, 1.7, 2, 2.3. Things are moving in the right direction. 12% is a good growth of revenue. That is good. So even though we had the pot for COVID, it went back down. We are getting growth now. The macro conditions are very different. That's good. Operating income has improved. It's negative 607 million. Uh, we are spending money, but we are improving. As you can see, negative 1.3, negative 1.1, negative 806, negative 607. 25% improvement. That's good. But other businesses might be growing just as much, but they have more information on the value. If you're going to buy something, you have to know the value. I don't know yet the intrinsic value of this business. I can guess, like others have done, but for me, that's not a buy. It never, I can't ever buy anything like that, and I don't care if I miss it. There's something else I can buy. Net income... Uh, at net income, negative 1.7, 1.5, 1.1, 856, 22%. This is all good. This is all good. So far, good. Cash flow up 97%. Very, very good. Very, very good. Nice. Things moving forward. Congratulations to the company. Very, very good. Look at the balance sheet. Our balance sheet, 8.6 billion, okay, in assets, 2.3 billion in liabilities. Now, what I want to see if I was on the edge of buying this, would be liabilities that weren't debt. Because debt doesn't do anything for me, right? I've spent the money. I'm now in debt. The business is where it is. It's done whatever it is I did with the money. But now I've got the debt, which I'm paying interest on. Now, admittedly, debt's going to go down. The cost of borrowing is going to go down. We know that. That's, so that could be a, a nice big catalyst for a business with debt. We talked about it earlier. Low caps with um, a lot of debt could suddenly do really well because debt comes down and their business can grow. M mega caps, they, they don't worry about that so much. Um, so what we don't want to see is too much debt out the liabilities. We want to see ongoing expenses in the business, um, making the business profitable and grow, not debt. Debt doesn't do anything once you spent the money. However, because rates are coming down, not going up, it could be a catalyst in the stock price. So there's two ways to look at that. Uh, they've got 4.8 billion in cash. They are well stacked with cash. Out of 8.6 billion assets, it's not just buildings or factories or whatever it might be, it's cash. They've got 4.8 billion. Half of their assets is cash. So they shouldn't be in any, in, in, any, in any debt, but they might be. They just might not pay it off. I don't know. Let's have a look. There you go. Long-term debt, 657 million. They're managing their balance sheet correctly. They could pay all their debt off. They've got the money to pay their debt off. They chose not to, um, and which is a good catalyst for because it's not that much out of the liabilities, which is good. Um, they can pay it off if they wanted to. So the balance sheet is good. And obviously they're keeping a certain amount of debt, which is going to go down. So they could get a, they could get a nice rally on their stock price. They're more than likely to see a rally on their stock price purely on the basis of their cash, their debt position and that improving. So that's good. The only thing negative is I don't know really what the business is. It's a little bit all over the place. It's also, it's also, um, it hasn't got an intrinsic value. So I'm just guessing, right? So anyway, there's the balance sheet. All right. Now, efficiency. This is what we we're talking about earlier. This is what the bulls were referring to, but without any numbers. Now here's the numbers. If you've got no margin, 
no profit. Your margins are negative. You're, you're, you're investing at the moment, whatever. You're bringing money in, but you're not making any profit, right? You, you are vulnerable for takeover, competition, so on and so forth. If you've got a wide margin, you can sell less, keep prices high, not have to reduce prices. You can compete. You can crush the competition. When you're negative margin, you're losing money. So someone can come along like Amazon or Uber Eats. I, I'm just just random picking stuff out of the, out of the air. With more money, da di da da whatever, 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 and they can beat you. And then you got to reduce prices. You can't because you're already losing money, yada, yada, yada. So, you know, the, the business has been around for a while. It seems to be improving. However, I don't like buying any business that's losing money like this. Operating margin, it hasn't improved since 22 for a year. Hasn't made any progress on margins. Operating margins hasn't made any pro In fact, they're all the same. There's no real improvement. There's no real numbers. There's nothing here to tell us the direction of the company. We can guess. Now, here is the problem. This is our, using all our numbers together, it gives us a profitability score. Well, no surprise, we're losing money. We're in, we're in the red. We're negative. 19 out of 100. It's not making any money. Can't go on like this forever. Um, declining return of equity. Now, return of equity is what makes a business great. The best, one of the best businesses in the world for returning of equity is Coca-Cola. It's improving all the time. Their equity... They make money from their equity, their investments, their cash, whatever. That's a strong business. This is declining uh, in, in return on equity. Um, exceptional growth forecast. You can't put too much weight on that because that's just the company saying, hey, we're going to do really well. Well, that's, that's great. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have a billion subscribers by the end of the day. Doesn't mean I am, does it? Right? <laughs> great. Right? So, uh, you know, whatever. Um, of course, analysts will like to jump on that. It's good headlines. They're paid to say so anyway. So whatever. You know, I don't put too much weight on that. The profitability is, is, is really scary here. Now, as I explained, they have good cash. Their debt is manageable. It's going to improve. So they're not going bust. They're not going bust anytime soon. So we don't have to be concerned about the business failing. It's not going to fail. It's not going bust. It has a 53% score. That's fine. Is it the best? Well, of course it's not. The highest I've seen is about 89% solvency. If it didn't have any debt with the cash it's got, it would probably be about 80%. It's amber. It's okay. It's got a one or two years probably looking at the balance sheet, the amount of spend they're doing here. So we're not going bust. So you can buy it thinking it's going to be around. Maybe you want to scalp trade it. I don't know what you want to do. Um, but it's it's okay. Um, anyway, I bet Wall Street love it. Looking at the review earlier on, on Morningstar, let me see what they say. And there you go. Wall Street do what Wall Street do. Wall Street are investors. They are gamblers. They are guessers. They are traders for today. They don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, nor do you, nor does anybody else. They don't care what's going to happen tomorrow. They're in, they're out, whatever. They can be wildly off. There's no intrinsic value. So where are you coming up with these numbers from? Potential growth based upon what someone thinks might happen. That's not sound investing. That's guessing. I don't do that. 128% upside on the best scenario. Now interest rates are coming down. We probably are in the best scenario a year from now. Probably are. Okay, great. 128%. I've got stocks which I know are going to forex, so I don't have to buy this, do I? Fifty-one percent average, okay. Fifty-one percent is great. Fifteen, you know, fifteen twenty percent is the is the S and P, great. But it's not based upon anything other than guessing. It's not enough for me. I can't buy guessing. And there you go. As I said, Uber, Uber is sitting there as a competition. If we just very quickly look at Uber uh, and see. Historic profit, if we just scroll down, uh, revenue, I bet their margins are bad. There you go. See, gross margin, 32%. They, if they choose, they can crush, grab. Their margins are high. 
they could potentially, if they chose to do so, potentially be a threat to grab. Anyway, you need to look at the competition and I'll give you the list of the competition and you can go and check them all out. Compare their margins, compare their profitability, compare their balance sheet. You can then make an educated, informed decision whether you should buy, hold or sell. Do that. I'll give you the list of all these in a minute in, in a link. Um, anyway, let's have a look. Move down. Now then, short interest. There is some short interest. Certain amount. Exceptional where it gets into short territory, short squeeze territory, where we are now with Virgin Galactic, for example, um, is, is above 20. Bearing in mind, no, this stock doesn't have the volume. One, it doesn't have enough short interest. Two, it doesn't have the volume. You need to have a 20% plus you need to have um, extreme volume. GameStop, with all the rubbish that went on with all the crazy people, um, it was... A uh, huge volume at 100% short interest. We are at 3.3. So when it's a lot, but it's not it, going to short. It's not going to squeeze. Um, we have uh, Apple around about half a percent, Coca-Cola half a percent, whatever. So you can see even a big company has some short interest, but it's so insignificant it's not going to ever do anything. I don't, why, why, don't know why anybody would short any, anyway. I think it's a silly practice, but people do it and I make money from it. So carry on. But um, there's not going to be a short squeeze here anytime soon. Let's look. Oh, these people make me laugh. These reviews here by Yahoo Finance. I love these two. I like his suit, by the way. He always looks very smart in his suit. But they read off scripts and I don't think they've ever invested in their lives. I don't, it's the way it comes across. Very often when I hear the reviews from these people, they don't seem to understand the business at all. But it makes good TV. It's, it makes you know, the TV channel popular. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm not going to review. I'm not going to. I sometimes play that, but I'm not going to because it was a year ago. No analyst has covered this publicly on TV for at least a year. If it was, it would be here. It's not. My review will be here within 48 hours from me making this video, it'll be here to replace this. There's no point me sharing this with you because it was over a year ago and it's really not relevant today. So we're not even going to bother with that. Sorry about that. Uh, there's no news. There's very little on this stock. Again, I like to know what I'm buying. Over the last 90 days, we've had uh, most positive news. 30 days, it's increased. Two, two items of news have been discovered through our, our AI, and this is very efficient, by the way. Seven days, two news, two items, and today, one. There isn't anything to talk about. There isn't anything really to know about. So you're just guessing. So for me, it's not a buy at all uh, at the moment. Anyway, that being said, uh, we want to compare it to the S&P because we need to do that. We need to, you know, We need to compare it with the best, most reliable asset you can own. So if we put 10 grand... In 2021, I'm sorry it's not longer, but that's where we have, uh, we would be um, up on the S&P, but we'd have 12 grand now. On grab holdings, if we'd have IPO'd, IPOs are not a good thing right now. We would be um, we would be at a position of uh, 2,364 in blue. So you can see it's more volatile, no surprise there, and you can see it's down. So there is my uh, initial look at this stock. Let me now give you my uh, uh, closing remarks on this stock, whether I would buy it or not, or whether you think it's uh, a buy or not. Let's have a quick look. Right. So for me, this is, uh, this is not a buy. Um, there's not enough known about it. There's potentially a lot of wind, a noise around the potential growth. There's the potential that it could be taken over or competition could beat it. Um, there's not enough to go on to make an informed, wise decision. However, the balance sheet is pretty good. Uh, its debts are under control. That could be a catalyst, could improve things. And if we look over the year... Uh, it is down, but we can see huge amounts of volatility. What is a concern is over the last week, we've only gained a percent where undervalued stocks, despite what 
Wall Street or analysts who are paid to report on it are saying, stocks that are undervalued, that are a good buy, hence why I bought them, they've exploded this last week. Grab has not moved at all. It's up 1%. You've seen most of my, if all of my investments actually go up 20%, 30%, 40%, 50% this week because they were all undervalued. The information was there. The valuation was, was accurate. wasn't based upon Wall Street analysts. wasn't on, it, it wasn't around false news and false rubbish. Grab hasn't moved. And we can see bad companies like Mullen and Scammy Stocks. They've hardly moved at all in this pump of pumps, um, that tells you a lot. It tells you that even though analysts are going, oh, it's going to be great, we're going to go up 120% and yada, 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 there's no news. No one's reporting on anything. They're just getting paid to present those reviews. There's not actually any editorial being done. And I know I've worked in theatre. I know all about editorial. You want editorial, not adverts. Do not, do not pay for, to advertise your business. Get editorial. There's no editorial. No one's talking about the business. No one's buying the business. And if there was reason to buy it, trust me, somebody would be buying it. And they ain't. So for me, it's not a buy. Click above my head if you want Alpha Spread. Alpha Spread is without doubt the best algorithmic software online. It's why I use it. It's why I'm partnered with the company. What does that mean? It means they put all of my reviews on their website. They don't sponsor me. They don't pay me anything. I do it because I want to provide a service to my viewers. And I also want to buy the best stocks as well. So there is my review on Grab. Above my head, you will see the links down below. You get the dis uh, discount for, for Alpha Spread. My members will basically get a free, uh, uh, my membership for free with a discount that you get using the link that I provide. So it's the best way, a better deal than Bloomberg and CNBC. They, can, they can't offer it. Uh, over here, you'll see the full Alpha Spread list of all the reviews that I do for all the stocks. And down here, you'll see Meet the CEO. When I interview the CEOs of all the companies that I review as well, you'll see all of that. Until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.